Today we're going to carry on with our home photography projects and we're going to talk about portrait photography. We're going to talk about how you can spice up your portraits really quite easily. A few different tips and tricks that you can do right in your own house. It's Tutorial Tuesday! <laughs> Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. And this week, we're talking all about portrait photography. We're going to talk about different ways you can spice them up. Are all stuck at home, and I'm assuming that probably the portrait photos you'd be able to take at home are of people that you actually live with. So we're going to talk about a few different tips and tricks you can use in the house and in the garden to just kind of spice them up and get a bit creative with different things. Let's just dive straight into it. Now the first one we're going to talk about are shadows. There's lots of different ways you can play with shadows, lots of different things you can do to get a bit creative with your photos, and there's lots of different objects you can use to actually cast a shadow or to actually affect the light falling onto your subject. So we've tried out a couple just to kind of give a bit of inspiration and try out a few different creative things. The first one we should talk about is actually a colander. Now most people have a colander or a sieve or something like that, and if you take that out into the garden somewhere where there's a good bit of sunlight, and actually this works really well in harsh sunlight, which can be more difficult to shoot in, so this is quite a good one, is you can actually hold that up so that the shadow is covering your subject's face, and you're just getting the sun coming through the holes in the colander, giving these kind of little dabbles of light on your subject. There's lots of different things you can use to create interesting lighting effects or interesting shadows on your subject's face. Of course, you could just get them to hold their hand up, casting a shadow of their hand across their face. You could use tree branches, you could use really any plant you might have. And of course, reflections work really well as well. So maybe using a mirror or anything reflective is gonna help really well and bounce a bit of light, but probably create an interesting lighting effect. So this is one where you can get a bit creative and try different things to cast either a shadow or a lighting effect onto your subject. Now the second thing I want to talk about is angles. Something I'm super guilty of is I always tend to go for a close-up of my subject's face. I don't know why, I just always seem to go a little bit closer than I'd like and I don't get the wider shots. So something I've been doing recently to force myself to stop that is to start considering different angles for my portrait shoots. And this is actually something that has been really helpful for me. So I'm, I'm starting to consider things like imagine that I was shooting this for, as like a commercial shoot, for the top that my subject is wearing, or for her shoes, or for her trousers or shorts, or whatever it is she's wearing. And it forces me to pull back a little bit and get a wider shot, or not such a close shot, of just her face. And I'm actually getting more of her body and more of her in total in the shot. Now, of course, there's always time to punch in and get a nice close up. That can look great, especially if your subject is wearing like really interesting makeup or something like that. But it is good to vary those angles. Maybe try from further down and shoot up. Now, the third thing I wanna talk about is, is getting creative with what you can use for a backdrop or props or anything like that. So for example, here at home, I don't have any particular photo backdrops. You know, I could hang up a black blanket, I suppose, if I or a dark blanket. But in this photo, for example, I wanted to really emphasize the pink in her makeup and, and actually have a pink backdrop, but I don't have anything like that. So I just used a pink towel that we have. I hung it up on the washing line, of all things, behind my subject. We've got a little wall which she sat on, and it looked, it looked great. It came out exactly as I hoped it would. And you can get really creative with different things like that. You know, towels, blankets, anything like that can make for a great backdrop. And you can use the natural light of the sun as your light. You can, of course, use walls as your backdrop. I've seen people sticking newspaper to walls. That looks really good as well. But you can get really creative with everyday objects as either backdrops or props for your photo. That can look really, really good. And the last tip I wanna talk about, we've actually done a full video on, is using something as your foreground. So having something that actually is out of focus, it's framing your subject, some sort of blocking or framing device that you can have actually further closer to the lens which you can shoot past. So this can either be something like a glass which we were holding up in front of the lens in one of the last videos, or it could be something like a plant, some leaves, some flowers. Anything can look really good and you can experiment with this. So whether you're talking about this, you're talking about the angles we're using, talking about the backdrop and the props, and of course the shadows and the lights as well. It's just about getting really creative and, and trying to think outside of what you would normally do. Try and change that thought process to try something new because we're all stuck inside. It's a great time to kind of push ourselves a little bit outside of our comfort zone, try something different and just try something 
that's gonna get a little bit creative. Now, if you've got any tips of your own, pop them down in the comments below. We've had some great tips recently about CDs and all kinds of stuff that you can hold up to the lens. So pop them down in the comments. I love reading through those. Of course, make sure to like and subscribe because we've got new stuff all the time, at least every Tuesday. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.